Hi everyone, I go by the name Gray, and I am a young artist currently on a self-learning art journey with high hopes on becoming a freelancer one day. So we'll see where this art journey takes me. To be honest, I didn't expect my previous video to do as well as it did. <laughs> and honestly, I was like, dang it. It had to be the video where I showcased some of my worst artwork. I genuinely didn't expect it to do well and I wished it didn't do well because <laughs> because of how it didn't showcase the best of my work but overall I'm very thankful that it did well in the end because it gave me encouragement that people can see some worth into those drawings and I want to prove even more that I can produce even better drawings for you guys to see. Thank you to the people who left behind those really kind comments. They actually were really encouraging and helped me push forward with grinding on my art. Like literally, when I see a new comment, I'm just like so giddy and so grateful because I don't know how people on the internet can be so nice to me. <laughs> um, so thank you for those nice comments. And I'm grateful to see and read especially those comments that talk about how I'm like an inspiration and that really motivates me as well. So rooting for all of you guys who is on the same self-learning art journey as me or in a similar boat as me. I also want to mention one commenter who said, I wonder if there even is any artist who has less than 90% unfinished pieces and honestly i was like yeah that's a good point there has been multiple i think a good number of indications from artists that i personally admire who kind of already indicate that yeah you're gonna make a lot of mistakes you'll have to grind through a good number of pieces or a good number of iterations to find your desired results and the more I think about it, it's probably normal for an artist, like the commenter said, to not have a lot of finished pieces and have a greater, greater amount of unfinished pieces. So yeah, to anyone who is on this self-learning art journey as me, just like in the previous video, I think we just have to get used to failures and just keep moving on and keep trying for example if you guys know guiz he is like a really popular instagram artist and an illustrator that i am subscribed to on patreon and even at his level he clearly expressed being frustrated with the process of making his art and i would see in his patreon how he would go through many different kinds of compositions or color schemes or something like that for him to be satisfied before delving fully into completing one piece and that also proves the fact that as artists we probably have to fail a lot but it's very good if we fail a lot and we fail fast and we fail early in each piece we make before I talk about the piece that I'm currently showing you guys in this video, I also wanted to quickly mention how I hope I really want to express my one of my goals for this channel and one of the goals is to create a series with a good number of videos that record my art journey as a self-learning artist. So if anyone is in the same boat, they can refer to those videos, such as the video I'm doing now, and just work along with it and maybe it will encourage them and help them not feel so alone in this art journey and see another artist who is learning by herself doing what they do and struggling through it, but is keep working through it. I will put the series in like a playlist sometime now or later so it's easier to find but back to the recording on this video so after i published the video or 
while I was making the previous video for this channel, I certainly was going back to doing daily practice. So I mentioned that it's better to take small projects, medium projects, and large projects. So I made sure that the daily practice of those small projects I was doing really prepped me for the larger projects I wanted to do, such as making illustrations and making comics. So I primarily focused on clothing studies this time around. Clothing studies and looking to see how I can stylize the human body, I guess. Stylize the human body and clothes. I really focused more on the silhouette of things. Basically focusing more on trying to simplify how the clothes look on the human body to make it more aesthetically appealing as you can probably see on screen right now so clothing studies and figure studies were part of the like gestural clothing studies were kind of part of my fundamentals daily practice honestly i'm not sure if clothing is part of fundamentals but eh, it's close enough <laughs> so i did those daily studies so those were part of the smaller goals that I tried to get in. Maybe not daily as much as I hoped, but close enough <laughs> for my current situation as of now. So after I've determined on doing these various kinds of different sized projects, I also did a medium sized project I think last week and last last, last, last week. It is actually part of a series I wanted to do and hopefully monetize a little in the future. But unfortunately for me, it did not turn out the way I wanted it to. And eventually I kind of had to abandon it for now. I'll show a quick work in progress of it on screen. As you can see, the colors aren't that great. Actually, I like the colors more after I changed the color scheme after after realizing that it, it wasn't good, but then I thought it was good again and then by the thought I by the time I thought it was good, I already deleted all the color layers with the colors in it. And that's like oh my goodness, a huge lesson for me not to delete my color layers so fast and resort to an entirely different color scheme and not have it saved somewhere else. Maybe a mini tip for you guys out there is to, if possible, try to save your different iterations of a piece so you don't have to kind of get stuck and not be able to go back very easily to the previous color scheme that you had, for example. So yeah, I realized that color was my biggest obstacle in this piece and I decided to temporarily abandon abandon the series, abandon this series of projects for now and turn to focusing on my daily studies and turn to focus on actually working on this specific fundamental color. And now that I think about it these days, in the past Basically, I started my self-learning journey since 2022 and over since then, the fundamental that I covered the most was anatomy. I believe I spent like around six months or more on it, which is super long and it didn't have to be that long, but eh. <laughs> so I also went a little, dove a little bit like studied about color but never really applied a lot of specific studies on this topic and in the past I've also did perspective studies so color is probably what I'm going to focus on for the last two months of this year so I actually have a book a, a very a very thick textbook like book called color and light featuring artists like Charlie Pickard, Nathan Fawkes, Gouaise, yeah, and 
all of these artists had a really admirable control on color or knowledge about color so i was learning the fundamentals on color and light in this book and as i will show on screen quickly i specifically did a few value studies and and from the book i learned about limiting my values to only three shades then just expanding it up to five and by doing that, by doing these little value studies on photos that I just found appealing on Pinterest, at first it was kind of like weird, like why do you only limit your values to only five shades? Isn't that really boring, simplistic? But by doing these studies, I've reached a realization like, oh, it really allows the viewer to have a very clear understanding of your work because there's not a lot of values for them to comprehend and by limiting your values you're doing something what the book I think calls a value grouping where you group your values in comprehensible and appealing shapes I guess or something like that I think limiting your values is a very valuable lesson for me that I wouldn't otherwise have known had I not done a specific value study like this. And I'm guessing that the number of values was one of the problems I might have had with my medium sized project. So after doing these little value studies, I decided to commit to grinding and focusing on one specific photo from Pinterest and doing a very more in-depth study on value and color. And as you probably can see again on screen, I actually was at first using a set of brushes that I eventually didn't like on the study I was doing. And I've I know that there are probably some people who would say that the brushes don't really determine your artwork, I guess, in a sense, you know what I mean? That like it it depends it depends more on your art skill and your level of skill to for you to refine your piece to the point that you like it. And I think there is a level of truth to that, but the brushes I was using, I felt really limited my level of exploration and it did not lead me in the direction of style and aestheticness that I was going for and I realized that. So I mean, from a standpoint, I think I did an okay job with this study, with this set of brushes or this one brush I think but I knew something was missing and I knew that I wasn't I shouldn't be limited to the result I was getting now there had to be some other brush I could use something else that can help me express my vibe or style in a better way and just to explain myself a little the reason why I wasn't really into this more painterly feeling. I'm a person who is really into line art. The thick painterly feel is not really my cup of tea. I still really admire the people who can really master like the thick painterly style, but for me, I would really love something more airy with more emphasis on sharper silhouettes and a crisper design for my art style. So people like Amy Thompson, I believe, is like a really inspiring artist for me. And I think some of my influences included the wa watercolor artist that I took art classes under when I was younger. I still remember when I was around middle school and elementary school age just going into his house and then looking to the right and I see this beautiful landscape watercolor piece by 
this artist that I was learning under and wow, I think that left a really big impression on me. Also, I really admire the styles of certain webtoon artists like the artist that made Unholy Blood, the strong silhouette and stylistic characters from Legend of the Northern Blade, and last but definitely not least, the artist, webtoon artist that made Mother's Contract Marriage. <laughs> I know it's a, a little cheesy for a title, but her style has so much, brings me so much inspiration. Like, she utilized this really detailed and detailed line art while maintaining painted in details that otherwise wouldn't normally work with that much detailed line art. So yeah, I hope that gives an idea of the goal I kind of wanted this study to, to go for because I, for some reason, I didn't just want to do a regular old color study. I wanted to also include my voice into it and more on that later. So I scrapped my first pass with the color study and tried to add line art because at first I didn't add line art at all but then my line art looked super stiff and not fun at all so I also scrapped my line art. Thankfully I was going through my YouTube feed and I saw an artist that I was subscribed to named Heyoon. I definitely butchered the name I think but she's she or he is a Korean artist that makes these fan art portraits of mm, especially k-pop celebrities on YouTube and they had this brush set that really was giving off the airy feeling I wanted and you know, especially making that video about all my failed pieces and going through that much of a failure. Their brush set was $13, but you know, I was desperate. <laughs> yeah, and in the end, I don't think I regretted that purchase because on this third try, I was, I felt like I was closer to the style I wanted or the kind of vibe I wanted to give off in my pieces. Yeah, this is a little bit more of a tangent towards studying the fundamentals, <laughs> but hey, I wanted to keep it fun. So I watched their process on how they used their brush set that I bought and I noticed that they put in this kind of sketchy line art, line art first. It wasn't like super messy, but it wasn't super clean. And then after that, they kind of smudged in the colors that they wanted, blended it together, I think, and then combined the line art and colored coloring later, layers together. So I incorporated their method and it's, it was basically smooth sailing from then on, which I was really glad about. Going back to the value studies that I learned from the color and light book, I thought the value grouping really helped me immensely and alleviated a lot of the guesswork in choosing colors from the color wheel. Because when you look at the color wheel, like, you can go for like super unsaturated colors or super saturated colors, light colors, dark colors. I think what I learned has really consolidated my and made me more, made me more confident in what colors I chose. So color studies are helping me a lot. As I was going through this color study, I was able to apply a lot of the art tips that I've learned over these couple months, I think, I was able to apply some more color tips that I learned from the color and light book and probably some random art tips that I found online somewhere from other artists or an artist. And I would like to share these art tips with you guys as well, which I found to be really insightful and really helpful, so hopefully they are helpful to you guys too. 
And number one, one of the art tips I learned is color relativity. And what I mean by that is once you have a certain color palette going for you in the piece, maybe you wanted to mainly focus your color scheme to be a lot of different tones of red, for example, and different tones of green, which I did for this piece, kind of. When you start to pick colors in the more gray areas of those red colors or red or green hues, it starts to produce a phenomenon of not looking gray, but actually looking like purple or blue, if you know what I mean. It's like the colors in the gray are contributing because of color relativity to the piece. I don't know if I make sense, but essentially what I'm saying is when you are coloring your artwork, I think it's really helpful if you choose some of the more gray toned color of your main color scheme. Like if I had a saturated red, I would choose some of the grays of that saturated red or around that tone of saturated red and in that they the grays would produce like a cooler color and that cooler color would still match the vibe of that reddish your reddish toned piece you know what i mean so grays are important if you wanted to create a certain vibe of seamlessness in your colors in your artwork i don't know if i make sense but i'm just <laughs> trying to share with you guys as much as i can the second art tip that oh and how i applied it was you see the more saturated pinks on the blanket and the more saturated yellows the blush on her face the orange on her back the colors surrounding that, those, those um, areas of saturated colors are more gray toned and you see those gray tones actually give off a more cooler vibe, I think, at least the bed. Like, the bed might look a little more bluish but it's actually just a gray tone of a warm color which is really cool because of the ph phenomenon of color relativity. So the second thing I learned from learning about color and light is choosing the pathways between exposing the darks or exposing the lights. And what I mean by that is when you limit your values to only maybe like five values, for example, you can choose to put three values or four values on the darker tones of the color palette and only have one value for the colors that are in the light or you can do the polar opposite and make diversify the values in the light and lessen the values in the shadow and by that you can create different kind of different kinds of atmospheres so what i did in this piece is exposing the darks i put more values I believe three shades, I think, three or four shades of different values into the piece and probably only gave one value to the places that are in the light. And by exposing the darks like this, I was able to give a more light and peaceful feeling to the piece because when you diversify more values in the dark, you can naturally see see more forms in the dark, right? And when you can see things in the dark, it feels more peaceful than like, for example, at night when you open your eyes, you can't really see anything, any forms as clearly. So exposing the darks helps alleviate that scary feeling and set in this more peaceful feeling. Yeah, I'm getting a little nerdy on this, <laughs> but it makes me excited to just learn these really helpful fundamental art tips. The third art tip I wanted to, wanted to share is you can go into two 
different pathways again. You can either go into painting for color or painting for value. And what I mean is some artists, let's take for example Gouet's. Gouet's is really known for these dark and moody pieces and the dark values are very striking, I think. And you don't see a lot of saturated or very fun and saturated colors in his piece. It's more like grayish, moody. So what I believe is he was probably painting for value. So he was, in order to avoid overexposure, you kind of have to choose in a way between these two pathways. Um, maybe I'll show his work on screen so you can see and contrast it with another artist that paints for color. And between these two, you can probably see that when you paint for color, you give an entirely different mood to your painting. And I think that's the beauty of studying about color. You get to further understand how to make your colors convey the mood that you want the audience to feel. And I think for this piece, I wanted to do like in between those two pathways, not using like super dark values for like the darker parts of the piece, but not using super, super light values for the piece. I think I ended up using very, very light values, but all in all, I definitely did not use any, I did not use the 100% white color on the piece. So I made sure that my darkest values never went completely to black. And I think for this piece, I, I think I painted mainly for the colors. So I was able to go more saturated, go for more saturated colors because I was limiting my value, range of value for the piece. So, so yeah, that was the third art tip that I learned. Number four, overexposure. So as I mentioned before, I probably overdid the how light the values went for this piece. And it's kind of like breaking the rules a bit when you learn about the fundamentals of color. In the art world, the rules are made to be learned and it's made to be broken. Once you've learned the rules, I believe there is a range where you can go that you can start breaking them to create this unique style and unique voice into your pieces. So I did that with how saturated my colors went and stretching my range of values, I think. Almost done with the art tips, just two more, which is it might be good to focus your saturated colors on focal points instead of putting it everywhere on the piece. So that's what I did for this color study. I tried to put super saturated colors on so like on the silhouette of her hair and then on her cheek, there's a more concentrated, saturated pink. And on her lips, it's a more saturated red, her eyes as well. And surrounding that, such as the light behind her head, I made sure to incorporate more gray toned colors and less saturated colors. So your focus would focus more on the head and her eyes, her hair. And the bed behind her definitely had desaturated colors. So focusing your saturated colors on focal point areas, I think really helped make the piece more clearer and more relaxed. Relaxing for the viewer is not as chaotic and it's more clear. Last, lastly, I also want to mention one art tip, which is determining whether you want your piece to feel cool or warm. And I think it's important to create this sense of hi hierarchy of feeling because I think it would be 
generally unideal for a piece to have clashing warm and cool colors like 50% of your piece has cool tones and 50% of your piece has warm tones I think it just creates a sort of chaos more in this piece so I made sure to really make this piece warm toned so I used an airbrush I believe to kind of incorporate those orangey reddish hues into maybe I would like to say 60% to 70% I wanted to raise the warmness of the piece to maybe 60 to 70 percent and i think that creates more clarity to the piece to the color study as well so as you can see this color study went beyond <laughs> being just a regular color study honestly i probably took it too far in a way but because my previous video did so well Honestly, I really wanted to prove to you guys that I'm capable of accomplishing a piece and not just I'm not just failing a lot of pieces. So, I really put a lot of effort into this one and I'm grateful that I tried to incorporate my kind of style or voice into it at, into it as well and not just copying directly from the photo so yeah actually i think this was supposed to be like a daily study but this one ended up to last over three days which i think is okay to do as long as it doesn't consume like one week <laughs> and become like a project and like a medium project you know but anyways i'm kind of rambling so over the course of this video you probably have heard me mention a lot about putting in my voice into this study and there is a reason for that actually and you know i actually watched another tyler edwin video <laughs> and got a lot of insight for myself really i think his channel is such a gold mine for self-taught artists. He gives really quality and helpful art tips and he has a Patreon with tutorials and such so definitely recommend him. He talked about how to stand out in the creative world in one of his recent videos and basically he said don't just put out fundamentally solid work. Make sure your individual voice is incorporated into your work so that it stands out because your artwork should convey a feeling that you, as an artist, want the viewer to feel. It's like, it's like presenting two pieces. One piece is just a regular old building with no feeling to it. Like, when the audience sees it, it's like, oh, it's a building. And the other piece is like, oh, it's a very spooky and gloomy building, you know what I mean? So really expressing a certain tone and mood stylistically in your work while being solid in your fundamentals, I believe, will take you farther into being accomplished in the art world and standing out. So keeping that in mind, I really did, I might have gone overboard, overboard in that, but I've really tried to include my own artistic voice into this color study. Last but not least, Tyler Edlin really gave an important tip. He said that if you don't take a class or purchase an art mentorship, he indicated that there is still a way for you to grow. If you're like me, I've I've basically have not taken any art mentorships over the last few years, one or two years that I've been learning digital art, save for one, which I've did not complete and kind of left to the side 
I basically did not do any art mentorships. So learning by yourself, it can be really a struggle, especially if you don't know what kind of content is, is correct for you to learn from and what artists you should kind of copy from or learn from on YouTube or other free art sources online. But Edlin mentioned that one way you can learn art by yourself is basically do studies of real photos. And by doing that, because like photos are based on reality, you can find colors and find compositions that are realistic and make sense. And you have that more foundational knowledge even if you don't take an art mentorship, for example, and have live critiques at your disposal. But if it's possible, I, I honestly think that professional and timely art advice can be super helpful in someone's art journey. But honestly, at this point, I, I kind of want to not do it because, um, because of my personal learning style and I'm not very rich, <laughs> so I'm trying to conserve my money and find ways how I can learn by myself. So if you're like me, maybe it's a good idea to, to consider doing more studies of real photos. Anyways, after my long nerdy rambling of this topic, I want to start closing it in to the end. And the question I want to pose for myself before you guys is, what can I improve from this color study? And I've come up with three things. Number one is shape language. I think I kind of did for now. I am kind of satisfied with the shape language the color study was giving off, but I know that I can do better and bring a more style to, for example, the silhouette, the girl in the picture is giving. Maybe in the future I would do more studies with shape language in mind. And number two, I think I can improve on my hands. As you can probably see, my hands, like the colors on my hands are kind of muddy and not very clear. I want to make sure that my hand game is like super good and even better than what you see on screen right now. And last but not least, I noticed that in the artworks that I draw, I have trouble making the eyes look where I want it to look. So you might notice that the eyes in this color study might not actually be looking at the book. I'm not really sure. Like it kind of might look like she's looking into the distance so i probably should go back to studying eye anatomy or something like that in the near future all in all this study helped me by making me more confident about color and thus i can delve into a more bigger project such as the series of illustrations i wanted to do earlier on that i mentioned earlier on in this video I think I would have more knowledge in my reservoir, 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 <laughs> in my reservoir more than before. And yeah, it gave me more confidence. And future studies will definitely be more color focused, I believe. I have more stuff planned, so if you are interested, stay tuned. Fundamentals is important everyone. Expressing your unique voice is also important to stand out among the crowd. I am nearing two years of seriously learning art as a self-taught artist since 2022. I am dreading but looking forward to the future. Thank you for watching and I hope things that I've mentioned in this video were helpful or encouraging. To you guys again i would love to know where you guys are in your art journey what videos i can make that could possibly help or encourage you i wish you the best and happy painting Bye bye
Thank you.